Welcome to another episode of Bad Batch Recaps. This time we are in episode 13, which is titled Infested. We are rejoined by Robbie Fox. There's Clem down below me and myself, Ken Jack. We're here and we're going to talk to you about Infested. What did you think, though, before we start, uh, Robbie, of the previous two episodes? Because you're now two weeks uh, removed. I liked them a lot and I was upset to be missing out on the episodes where like we actually got to go back and experience uh past characters we got to you know reintroduce them to the universe and stuff so i was upset that i missed out on recapping those and even more upset that i rejoined on an episode called infested the day after i had to share an uber with a cockroach i hate bugs it was my bugs are my biggest fear you could take my man card do what you must i hate bugs So this episode wasn't very pleasant for me. As I'm recording this podcast, this recap right now with you guys, I still don't have my feet touching the ground. Speaking of not pleasant, you realize Bob did not denounce the H-Man. Yeah. Very interesting. Very Uh, interesting. That was BS. (laughs) I just log on to Twitter and Clem's, you know, aligning me with the H-Man out out of nowhere. (laughs) That should have been your first word. It should have been the denouncement. I got a bug in my room now. Oh, man. You're infested. Yeah, this is just a Bob Fox fucking documentary called Infested. (laughs) Um, (laughs) For some reason, we we just did My Mom's Basis, so I'm thinking this is like podcast and YouTube mode, or this Mm. is, you know, a YouTube show. And it's uh, (laughs) when you said Clem's below me, I'm just thinking people the podcast be like, what the fuck? Is Clem sucking his dick right now? Slop on my knob like corn on the cob. Check in with me and do your job. Lay on the bed. (laughs) Don't you clip that for social, Ken Jack? No, definitely gonna clip that. We never do that, right? We never take pot shots on social. It's too too late for that, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. Last episode was so cool. We got to see the Sandulas, uh, which is awesome. And that was like I think we were talking. Clem, we're talking about this like one of the first arcs. I feel like we had seen out of this show where like it's two truly connected episodes. That was really cool. Um, and that's what I think we had both said was going to end up being like maybe this episode is me connected to like a four part arc. That wasn't really the case. At least that's what it looks like. This is a very standalone episode, and presumably the next three are going to be more connected as they have to move into the closure of the series. Um. This episode, we'll, we'll get in. We'll go. We'll go straight through it. Well, there's a lot to get to. There's a lot of Easter eggs in this one too. Um, so we'll just get right into it. Um, so the episode starts. The batch returns to Ord Mantell on a sort of from a nondescript mission to. Uh, so they come back to Sid's place and they find out that it's been taken over by a new crime lord, uh, Roland. Roland, great. I would say this, the the devil look is like a cool look for this. Uh, I forget the name of these aliens, but like there, I think this guy's voice was a great villain voice. Whoever it is, that voice Roland, right? I liked cool. him as a character. He was just a bastard. Great villain voice has like the devil, which I'm guessing that's like the devil, uh, like kind of a, an offshoot of the devil species that you see in New Hope in uh, Mos Eisley, I right? That so, one yeah. dude. Yeah, they are. Get, get, Getting your your hangout or whatever you want to call it taken by a guy named Roland, even if he has like the the ties to a criminal overlord family, it's a tough look though. Like Roland's a tough name to get fucking pushed out by someone, right? Can we agree on Roland that? Roland just makes pianos, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so he's a Deveronian, is the the name I was missing there. there uh, but yeah, he's a cool guy. He's got like the whole Doctor No sort of like little petting the cat thing going on um he's the son of Issa durant who's apparently one of the leaders or, or a big a big crime underboss and so roland as a part of trying to get uh this is what sid gives us his backstory as trying to like build up his own empire he's like siding himself with the pike syndicate which we're going to get to more to later um so the bad batch they go and they meet roland roland's like hey if you guys want work i can help you but sid's out she's gone she's she's donezo and they're like, uh, we'll think about it. And then they, well, not even really. They're just kind of like, no, fuck you. That was, I feel like that's the bigger reaction, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like we don't want anything to do with the devil horn, guys. So they leave. Uh, they meet back up with a defeated Sid who's making a plan to take back her parlor from the, the little devil guy. Um, so her plan is like she she knows that Roland has a big shipment of spice, which he's holding for the Pike Syndicate. Pike Syndicate, huge bad guys. Her plan is I'm gonna go steal that spice and it's gonna help like usurp him. I'm gonna get my own my little parlor back, Sid's parlor. Um, so her plan is we're gonna go underneath these subterranean tunnels that no one uses. We're gonna sneak back into the office. And immediately we all I think knew is like this is not gonna end well. Once you go subterranean, shit's never gonna be good, right? No, subterranean is not a word that you want to be using in your missions. No, 
<laughs> and she's like, they're infested with some vermin too. As they're going through the tunnel, she's like, yeah, there's like, so there's like some vermin we're gonna have to run into, but it's not gonna be a big deal. Just stay quiet. It's like, why are we staying quiet? It's fucking Sid. It's like Sid, you're the worst. You make us fly across the galaxy, do shit we don't want to do. Now we're going subterranean for your head. And like, listen, I love. I think we all like Rhea Perlman, right? But it's like Rhea Perlman is just like she's like the old lady in the neighbor when she's making you like bust your ass and you get like a quarter by the end of it. That's mm. what fucking Sid. I hate Sid. So I'm like, do we really want to help Sid right now? And I know she like pitched the way she pitches it to him, but still, fuck Sid. Fuck Sid once and for that should have been with the bad batch. Sid, fuck Sid once and forever. That should have mm -hmm. been their thing, and then they just left. That you know, roll credits. <laughs> she didn't really negotiate with them. She just kind of blackmailed them. She's like, "I know where the bodies are buried. I've been keeping a lot of secrets for you guys. Like, so you guys have to help me." So it wasn't even really a negotiation. She was just being just as much of a bastard as Roland is. And yeah. like, I, I'm taking Bad Batch away from them. Like Bad Batch, you know what Bad Batch does? They take the the person who knows where the the dead bodies are. They then make another dead body and they bury that body <laughs> with the dead bodies. Like there's the fucking it's on it's on your ship. Her like two fucking lackeys. They're fucking you kill them too, and you just fucking dump them probably in like Tatooine, right? That's where everything ends up, right? So it's like, what are we doing here, Bad Batch? These guys aren't so bad, guys. I have to tell you, as a new as a newbie to the franchise, I'm not impressed. They're not very bad. <laughs> Eject them in the space and just close the loop. Uh, <laughs> that would have been much better for them anyway. Uh, so they go into these tunnels. She says, you got to look out, like, um, again, for the, the vermin that we're going to find. And these tunnels we see immediately, we, we're, they're filled up with webs. And I think for us anyway, for, for me anyway, the first thing I thought of was, the, um, and we're going to see these in a second, these motherfuckers I, from yeah, Mandalorian. Ahead. Take them off the screen. Just, <laughs> that was the first oh, thing. Poor Bob. The Bob the first, so thing, first thing that came to mind was that fucking nasty snow spider from Mandalorian. And I'm like, oh my God, are we going to see like a, a, a more a non-Arctic version of this spider? And I was just like, immediately horrified because I hated those creatures so, so, so much um uh so basically they uh, uh they break in they get past it without incident they break into the office uh they steal the spice they load it onto the mining carts um and uh the henchmen that work for roland they chase them make a lot of noise in the process yeah <laughs> sorry bob they chase them down there through the mining carts they shoot at them they make a bunch of noise which again uh Sid had told us earlier don't make noise we're gonna have problems if you make any noise that's why we're doing this the, the hand cart thing which i always thought those are so cool like when whenever oh, yeah. you're on like one of those things, oh, whatever they call like leap, like I guess like a lever railway, but those are awesome. I don't know. I think of Temple of Doom all the time, like Indian short round in the little carts. Mm. Yes, exactly. I, I always see like the rides, like upstate New York, they have those too, where like you can like it was someone else like use like the hand lever once and go down like those tracks and this is cool. Um, so they uh, go with like uh, they get chased by these henchmen again, make a whole ton of noise on their way down, uh, and they wake up these creatures, which we find out are Erlings. Uh, they're these little vampiric bat things that are hypersensitive to light, which is apparently their only weakness. Uh, they're big ass bugs. Uh, they they knock out a whole bunch of the henchmen, and the bad batch like just barely manages to escape out of the tunnel uh, and then close it up. And but they lose their spike in the caverns during the process uh so in the meantime the pikes show up they confront roland and the uh uh basically they say look you you don't have the spice we are going to kill you unless you get the spice asap and um they, they, the bad bat shows up uh and the, the pikes tell him like look now if you have the spice you gotta go get it in the meantime you're gonna have to take omega and bad batch understandably fairly hostile to that right yeah and I love the look of those pikes too. Like I wanted to note that when they came in, I was like, "Ooh, they're kind of badass, unique looking pikes." Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, are pikes something that we've known about in the Star Wars universe? Are they talked about? Are they you see them? Okay, so I because when I hear pikes, I'm thinking like um, I almost thought uh, like Grand Theft Auto. You know, there's all the different gangs and stuff like that. Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, we got a little GTA gang." I, I kind of dug their vibe. Also. Fucking, I, I guess, again, go back to Ken Jack being a history major, which is something I learned on Twisted History. How many wars have been fought over Spice? Because I feel like Spice is, a, is like yeah. the fucking beginning of a lot it's of It's the wars opium wars of, yeah. of the Star Wars universe, for sure. <laughs> like, like, more or less. It's it's a crazy, they're a really big thing. We'll get more of them later in, in Easter eggs because they have like a big overarching sort of thing in Clone Wars, for sure, which was an awesome arc or just area. I'm sure Bobby's excited, or Bob's excited to talk about too. Um, but yeah, that they're really cool um but 
so yeah, the Pikes want to take Omega as like collateral while they go to get to Spice. Bad Batch is very hostile. That Sid convinces them somehow, like, yeah, take Omega as collateral. Let her, let him take him. Let him take Omega. We don't want to mess with the Pikes. Which, like, the Bad Batch at this point, like, you guys just gotta say, yeah, fuck you to Sid. Like when she says, gives a request like that to take Omega, like that's gotta be the line. The bitch batch. Absolutely. They're the bitch batch. They're the bitch batch. I'm, I'm, I'm done with these fucking guys right now. Like that was so fucking absurd with the, that that move that got pulled on him there. The bitch. You, you think this is the thing though? Crosshair might have been the dude that kept the, like kept them bad, and now that True. he's gone, it's like I, again, I don't know them before this series. These guys ain't bad at all. They're well, it's like bad. every boy band, you need a bad boy, right? Like yeah. every NSYNC had a bad boy. Backstreet Boys had a bad boy. We need Crosshair back as the bad boy. Dude. Yeah, it's like you know, when like you you ask your girlfriend to tell the waiter to send back food because you don't want to be mean. That's like <laughs> that's Crosshair was that guy for them. <laughs> yes, that's that's their <laughs> that guy. A good one, I like that. Um, so they leave Omega behind and they go to go grab the rest of the spice back from the tunnels. Uh, you see right here, Wrecker and Sid, uh, sort of like what would you call it, careening into the uh, the hole to get up to get it, which like, I didn't expect Sid to be this agile. She was quite limber True. and strong throughout this. Like she was operating that pulley thing. She's like dropping into this fucking hole with the spiders or gross creatures. Didn't expect that from Sid. Very surprising. Um, and shocker, they get all the crates, but they wake up the creatures in the process. Uh, tech manages to stop them by throwing this big ass flashbang, which is cool as hell. I, I, I thought cool. it was pretty cool. Yeah. I thought that was great. And even a good twist on like, you know, bugs are always attracted to light. They're always going towards screens or whatever. And then to make this their weakness, I thought it was a cool twist. I think we need to put, we need to get like a, um, uh, NFL draft, like breakdown of Sid and sneaky athletic is definitely on the list. Cause I'm right there <laughs> yes. with it. I was like, look at you, Sid, you're moving. And it's Rhea Perlman doing that in my mind, like a heavy Rhea Perlman at that. So complete mind fuck. Yeah, dude, she's chunk, man. She's dense, and she's just got like a big ass muscle strength, and like to be able to pull to do like this sort of like parrot or whatever you call it again, like you're dropping in there on the ropes. It's very cool. And that bow, like she had some bow skills too. I feel yeah. like she she was moving. Shout out to Sid. She's doing cool shit. Um, but yeah, so the they get back onto the ship. They get back to the pikes and give them their spice. Uh, they get Omega back. But they're about to just straight up kill Roland, like Russian live leak style. Like it was, I was like, what the? I was literally like, what the fuck? Like they had the knife out, about to behead him, and um, uh, Omega kind of like tries to stop them and be like, hey, look, like you have your shit, like like if you just leave, move on. Sid agrees and is like, look, just call it a bad deal. You don't have to kill this guy. Just we can all move on, go our separate ways. And they say like uh, they had a cool line. I think it was they said like we don't have bad deals or like the Pikes don't make bad deals. Which is cool because it shows you like with the, a lot of these syndicates, it's not even necessarily about the financial game, but about the reputation more than anything else, uh, That which I thought was so very, very cool. Um, they end up just chopping off his horn instead. You see right there, a little Hellboy action there. Yeah. Yeah, I, crazy. I got um, Sylvie vibes too, right? Doesn't she have one yep. horn chopped off? Yeah. So Exactly. Uh, that was the first thing I thought of too. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So now – He's definitely a Roland now, though. Like you know, he, he's clearly like yeah. Roland is not the prize pupil of the of the um, family, right? So, he, he needed yeah. to be torn down a few pegs. Yes, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, uh, I thought it was the cool moment right at the end, and they just kind of talk about um, like why it may get stuck up for him. And she's like, "Look, he, he might not be all bad. Uh, the, you know, the little creature—I forget its name, Rosie or whatever—likes it. Ruby, Ruby likes him. Like maybe he's not all bad." And that I think is the more overarching part of this episode, and we can just talk about like our general reaction to it. Um, I, I like the the sort of callback retro action they had in this episode. Um, I do think Roland wasn't great as a villain only because he only had like five or six speaking lines and they try to make him a little too three dimensional. Um, and I think that combined with just the overall sort of pacing this episode, it's not one of my favorites. I think the action was cool, but I just I was it was missing something. Um, and I do think, though, however, that like Roland was a good tool because the Omega defense of being like, look, he's not all bad. He, he can't be all bad. It's like a precursor to what we're going to get with Crosshair, right? Absolutely. And the fact that Omega is still the one seeing the good in people, kind of uh, the, the parallel with Boba being the bad guy and Omega being so, so good and so like, you know, seeing the light in everybody thought that was good. And it reminded me of Knives Out a little bit when they say like a dog is always a, a good judge of someone's character like omega being like ah his pet likes him so like i don't know that's a good judge so i don't know i thought that was kind of like funny 
Mm-hmm. Good callback, Bob. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Uh, Omega Fett, too, is making my brain break again the more I think about it. Uh, but I, I do feel like Roland, he'll definitely be in season two or three. Like, we'll, we haven't heard of last of him and the Duran family and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I, again, I, Ken, Ken Jack, I was really excited about a four episode arc to end the season, but this is just us like ruining the show for us. I was like, God damn it. Now we don't have that, but maybe it'll be three, maybe two episodes, or maybe it's just going to be a finale, right? But I do think, um, we're going to have that like crosshair coming back. I was waiting for him to show up the entire episode. Mm-hmm. I was shocked he didn't. Yeah, I think we're going to um, get a, a, re- a touch up on him again very, very soon. And I think that those final three episodes are going to be either arced or at least very connected because we do need to see now him on the hunt because that was like the big ending of the last episode was like look, Rampart telling Crosshair, like, look, this is your job now. I want you to hunt them down and finish them. So mm-hmm. that's stuff going to have to come out soon. Um, we can talk about some Easter eggs for this episode, though. Uh, one of the first things they mentioned right off the top of it was Gundarks. Gundarks, they're like, yeah, wow, Sid failed to tell us about all these Gundarks there. Uh, Gunnar's very, I think, uh, uh, established thing in Star Wars lore. Um, one of the first times you hear them mention is in Empire. Uh, he looks strong enough to pull ears off a of Gundark. Basically, like Lucas after he's recovered. Yep. Yeah, you look strong <laughs> enough to pull the ears off a of Gundark. Great line. And that's one of those things, too. When we watched it younger, we're like, what the? F- we still don't know what a fuck a Gundark even looks like. It was still a cool line, right? Like Moof Milker or whatever. It's got to be so fun to be the concept artist that eventually got to design that. Like, you've heard it for so many years. Everyone in the Star Wars universe knows of it by name. And then to be like, all right, I'm going to design it. Like, drawing, like, the big ears and, like, all of that stuff. Yeah, like, that's just a cool-looking creature. It looks like something out of Mortal Kombat or something. Yeah, I love it. Is there any part of, like, Star Wars lore from the original trilogy, like, something like that, like a reference that you'd love to, like, expand upon if you ever had any kind of, like, hand in creating a new piece of content? There's actually a really obscure one for me, and it's not from the original trilogy. It's from The Force Awakens, but I forget the name even. Whoever Han Solo is going to deliver the uh, the big Rathtar. Rathtars to it's king someone he's like oh yeah i gotta get these to king so and so and i was like what king in the star wars universe wants these big ass rathtar creatures so like i want more into that guy mm, i would love more about kanja club too and uh who's the other guy tell that to kanja club i love hey, that guy tell that to kanja club the the guavian death gang yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh that would be Oh, that would be a good one. Uh, uh, there was a, a question on my mom's basement that was asked um, if you could basically do the MCU, but Star Wars version. So, like, if you had to do in between movies, what like shows would you want to see? I would love to see it between six and seven, like closer to seven, obviously, Force Awakens, and get to see like how Han got in with them. That's a good one. I would just. Mine's very basic. I just want a little bit more about the little granola bar that Yoda eats because I always just love when he eats the <laughs> granola bar out of Luke's kit. So we saw what, something what was right? that like uh, Michael Keaton McDonald's movie. Oh, Bob just um, wants the, the, the founder. Or, yeah, he wants the founder <laughs> of the granola bars. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we saw them eat one, I think, in a previous episode of Bad Batch Recaps, right? They're eating like one of the ration bars. And we're like, holy shit, that's the thing that fucking Yoda eats. It's, it's crazy. But I agree. They always look good. When I was a kid watching that movie, I was like, fuck. I want that little cylinder, the food ration cylinder, whatever they called it. Um, but yeah, so the Gundarks over here, beyond being mentioned in Empire, uh, also mentioned uh, later on in Attack of the Clones. I haven't felt you this tense since, since we fell into that nest of Gundarks. He says how, or, or Anakin tells Obi-Wan, like, I remember that time you fell in the nest of Gundark and I had to save you? Um, they're also in the Clone Wars as well. They have to fight off Gundarks many times. Um, uh, but they're mostly only seen the cartoons again like this one. We haven't seen them in live action just yet. Uh, the Pike Syndicate, which we talked about before, is very, very big, especially in Clone Wars. Um, you see them here. They they get only get cooler looking. By the way, Clem, not even just in nice. in this. They they look way cooler in the other stuff. Uh, so they're basically like a cartel, more or less, and like one of the biggest crime syndicates in the galaxy. They're except a, they're a cartel, except instead of cocaine, it's it's spice. Um, and they have a big history in Clone Wars and Rebels. Uh, they killed Master Sifo DS. You remember from Attack of the Clones, like the guy who they who had ordered the clone army. They were the ones that actually killed him, and this is a guy that was with him. Um, that ended up like telling them the story of Sifo Dyas was a very cool arc in Clone Wars. Uh, and they're also part of the syndicates that took over Mandalore. Uh, you see one of the Black Sun guys over to the left. And they took over Mandalore with Darth Maul during the, the Clone Wars, which is very, very cool. Now, they were one of my favorite syndicate aliens. I'm sure, Robbie, you feel the same, right? Absolutely. The arc where they take over Mandalore is like 
all time and that i believe even involves like the dark saber and and all that so connected to the mandalorian so check that out if, if you want to go back on disney plus learn more about the pike syndicate very the cool black, looking aliens the black sun big fan of the black sun just the name in general and then obviously all the stuff in the background with them um spice in star wars though i feel like the food in star wars is pretty bland so i can understand why there's just like bodies <laughs> upon bodies just getting like because i mean i think back like can you imagine life without like just salt and pepper salt and pepper makes everything so fucking good no wonder why like the entire world was shaped around spices for so long yeah. and like all the crazy stuff with trade ships and and wars and stuff like that <laughs> you want a boiled plain womp rat sir <laughs> no no i need some salt on that bad boy for sure uh but yeah black sun very cool there's a and there's an episode and i think we had talked about this in a previous recap as well uh when maul was taking over these crime syndicates with shavaz press um the, the black sun you remember where savage like throws his double-bladed lightsaber and it beheads the entire yeah, black the whole sun table. <laughs> it's so fucking cool dude oh my god uh but that's neither here nor there uh but okay so another part um they oh, we also see pikes in live action as well you can see them here in solo one of robbie's favorite movies as well uh <laughs> here on here on kessel <laughs> Uh, with some other guys there, and also mining spice again, part of their cartel business, or whatever you want to call it. It's kind of like this is, instead of mining, it's just like they're, uh, you know, they have all the people in their underwear, like sifting through the coke or whatever, or the cocaine. This is like their exactly. version of that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, another couple of different little, little nods, I'm sure, uh, people have noticed the part, and then Robbie, you're going to love this one. Uh, the scene where, um, uh, Wrecker drops his flashlight and like wakes up the uh the, the the hive it's very very similar just as far as the way they structure the shot of it and everything to the scene where pippin drops the bucket in moria and lord of the rings and wakes up all of the goblins it was it was i'm almost positive a direct callback to that um there's another scene as well which you had already pointed out robbie the indiana jones cart fights it is so cool that that was one of my favorite yes. things in this there's nothing like a good cart fight to get your adventure sense like up and boiling right yeah, and shout out Club Penguin. Great game on Club Penguin. Mine and the the on the carts getting the coins. Man, old school reference right there, Club Penguin. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure Clem's favorite movie here too, Temple of Doom, is right. I I'm I, no I, I uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> not a big, I'm, I'm trying to like do it. I, I'm trying to like not get in trouble with the Indiana Jones part of Twitter right now. So I'm just gonna just say yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> It's in the bottom 50% of Indiana Jones movies, <laughs> that's for sure. But still significantly better than Indiana Jones 4. Oh, year. yeah. Which is that one, again. Uh, the Indiana Jones 5 that's going to come out, I think that's going to be fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, Fingers crossed. James Mangold. James Mangold, guy who did Logan, guy who did um, Ford vs. Ferrari. 310 to Yuma. 310 to Yuma, great movie. Under Underappreciated Western. A uh, bunch of other stuff as well. Uh, Mads Mickelson too now. So oh, we were I, just I, talking about Ford versus Ferrari on my mom's basement, and I said if I could do like a spin-off Star Wars movie, I would love to see a pod racing series or movie that it's like taken really seriously like that. Oh yeah, that would be awesome. Especially just like seeing them like build out the engines. Like the I pod said, people are so that. into F one right now. Like make like you know take uh nods from that take nods from racing and like let's see like a bunch of cool racers redeem pod racing yeah sebulba versus wado there's the title of the <laughs> <laughs> of the series i had some uh george lucas slander on the basement as well talking about the prequels and um let's just say we could just lump that into the indiana jones uh four as well right so ooh. what'd you what'd you slander about the big man what'd you say he said just, that he, he if he brought Star Wars in, he could take him out too. <laughs> and he kind of did that with the prequels. I said, let's just redo the prequels and the sequels, which I mean, now I'm getting all the Star Wars people mad at me. So fuck it. Fuck Temple of Doom. Fuck the prequels. Fuck the sequels. And if you're done with them, fuck you too. Clem is like Frankie hot. standing in the chair like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Look, man, sometimes there's a time in a man's life where he's got to make a stand. And I appreciate that. You, you do that. <laughs> Uh, I've, I've been without a kitchen for two weeks. I'm slowly losing my mind right now as I hear fucking construction going on upstairs. Oh yeah, so, we get into uh, that construction. Heated. Yeah, yeah. Like, eventually you're gonna you're gonna have to eat your boiled romp rats somehow, right? You're gonna have to put that over your uh, over your, your 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 fire pit. Um, so some questions and theories from this episode. I think one that comes to mind immediately was just who Issa Durand is, the mom of Roland, because they they have the fact that they just kept mentioning her means she's going to be a thing eventually. Uh, I just don't want to, I want to know who she is and like what that era or what that part of the crime syndicate is and just more about that. Um, there's only three episodes left. I will love to just know 
where we're going. I assume that in these last three episodes, we're going to get a convergence of not only just Crosshair and his troopers chasing down the Bad Batch, but we're also going to get, I think, a convergence of Cad Bane. Or in a convergence of Fennec Shand. I think all of that's going to mess with the Bad Batch into something. My assumption is going to be that in one of these episodes, it's almost going to be like Mando where Baby Yoda got captured, except it's going to be Omega's going to get captured and their thing is going to be trying to rescue her one last time. Um, but I also do think that we need to get essentially like a setup for what happened to Omega because the, the period while she becomes like an adult is already covered in Star Wars. So like where is she during those parts so i hope we get like a little bit of tease of what that is um but i'm not sure but what uh what questions or theories do you guys have for the show or at, the, at this point i i agree with you in terms of uh omega getting captured i think that's a good theory i, I could see like crosshair getting her or and maybe even like crosshair getting her and then cad bane and fennec shan helping the bad batch get her back for some reason i don't know but um i also uh, question wise would love to know for rebels they did like and in the end like a little flash forward of like here's where our characters are i would love to see that for omega like you said like where is she for her adult life are we going to get a whole new series after the bad batch is this going to continue past one season is this going to be a multiple season show i don't know okay because that was kind of like what i was going to ask before trying to come up with my theory is are do we know if we're definitely getting more of them um but if if it's not then you know i i, I imagine they would i feel like it had it's been pretty much everyone's liked it from what i've read right i feel like there's really been no criticism hard criticism through the show i think she, so she's very very good i think the issue with making a show around her is that she is so one-dimensionally good you know what i mean like she doesn't have a lot of textural layers as a character where like you need her to have like a little bit like more three-dimensional she needs to be like a, a little bit bad or confused or something and maybe you have her with somebody else like because the bad batcher is a perfect example of having like the confusion and the more three uh, the more depths of character so i think she would need to be with someone else for it to be more interesting or for her to have like a crisis of faith or whatever and become a different person throughout the the, the interwar periods and all of that yeah for me boba Ooh. maybe yeah okay it's like no no our family does this <laughs> mm -hmm. i i i just didn't know if i, I meant it, i didn't know if the bad batch was coming back for a, another season or something like that if that was in the plans or whatever but um again like you guys are talking me into this and i'm going through it and i see these different bounty hunters collapsing on the same spot and omega's being held captive and he's dying our guy's dying here up and i have fucking construction going yeah, i think someone's dying upstairs right now yeah, they just heard the they heard the news <laughs> that Hunter's gonna die, and they're just like, "Oh fuck!" They, they, yeah, drop they the dropped drill. everything that was in their hands. They were like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm super excited just to see where we go. Again, I don't think this episode was like the best episode by a stretch. I think it's in the bottom half of episodes for Bad Batch so far. But I do think that we're we're building our way into what is going to be an arc for the to finish out the show, and we just have so many characters to like wrap up, and um, just uh, excited to see what happens. I'm I'm pumped. Me too. No. All right. Um, so we will be back next week with another recap. Um, but until then, I'm Ken Jack. That's Robbie. That's Clem. See you next time. Fucking Hunter's dying. God damn He's it. He's dead. It's going to suck. <laughs> <laughs>